the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're going to be exploring the wonderful world of fill and color. Now, a lot of the drawings that we've done so far have been a little bit on the drab or boring side. And it's always a good idea to make your Visio drawings as attractive and professional looking as possible. And there might be a lot of different scenarios where the colors that you use are super important. For example, you might be producing some kind of technical document where the color used needs to conform to certain standards. And there's lots of reasons why you might need to make documents appear in a certain way. Now, we're going to be looking a lot more at themes in the next lesson, but I want to briefly start out by touching on them so that you have a, a general understanding of how a theme controls different color elements in your drawings. Now, I don't currently have a drawing open. We're going to create one from scratch and we're going to create a flowchart. So let's jump up to file and down to new and we're going to use the basic flowchart template and click on create. So I'm going to create a basic flowchart that covers a basic domestic task. So let's say, as I am from England, the process of making a cup of tea. So I'm going to use my basic flowchart shapes. I'm going to grab a start shape and just drag that into the middle. And once again, let's just zoom in a little bit to make this easier for you to see. I'm going to utilize the auto connect feature. I'm going to drag over and let's say we want to have a process box and I'm going to add another process box. And then finally, let's have an end box at the end. Now let's add some text to these boxes. This first one is going to say start. Put kettle on. Wait for kettle to boil. And then let's just put finish on the end, even though there are more steps to this process. Now, when I draw anything in Visio, there is always a default theme applied. Now, the theme determines many aspects of this flowchart, for example, the colors and the font. So if we take a look at the design tab, this is where we have our themes gallery. And you can change the overall look and feel of your diagram by simply changing the theme. Now, if you're wondering what theme that you're using at any given moment, if you take a look in this themes gallery, right at the bottom, you have a section called this document. And I can see that the theme that I'm currently using is the office theme, and that's being used on all of my pages. I can hover over different themes and see a live preview. And whilst most of my Visio drawing is obscured by this themes gallery, you can see that finish shape. And as I hover over, I get that live preview of what these different themes are going to look like if I were to apply them. So let's go in and select a different theme. So I'm going to choose this one here, Zephyr, and click to select. And you can see how that's applied and changed the look and feel of my flowchart. Once you've selected a theme, you then have a variance group next to that, a variance gallery. And this will show you any slight variations of your theme that you have selected. So if I hover over this one, it keeps the general look and feel of the theme, but it just changes certain elements. So maybe the effects that it's using or maybe the colors. So if you want to choose a different variant of your theme, you can do that from here. And something else you can also do is create your own theme. Now, I'm not going to get onto that in this particular lesson because we have a lesson coming up that is all about themes. Now, if you're wondering what the advantage of using themes is, well, they are universal across all of Office. So if you create a Visio diagram, and maybe this Visio diagram is going to be part of an overall PowerPoint presentation, which maybe includes PowerPoint slides, maybe some Word documents or Excel documents, because the themes are consistent amongst all of the Office applications, you can set one theme and apply it across all of the different applications to achieve a consistent look and feel. Now, in order to understand and use themes well, you need to understand how style, fill and color work in a more detailed way. And in this lesson, I really want to focus in on the nitty gritty of using color in Visio, because this is going to set you up quite nicely for the next lesson where we delve into themes in greater detail. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more on this drawing and let's move that so it's more in the center. 
And for this, I'm just going to start by concentrating on one of these shapes. So let's select Put the Kettle On. Now, if I go to the Home tab, you'll see in the Shape Styles group, I have options for the Fill, Line and Effects. So if I click the Fill drop down, this controls the fill color of this particular shape. And it opens up a palette of colors that I can then choose from. And what you might notice is that in this first category, theme colors, I'm not getting a real wide variety of colors here because these are the colors that are contained within the theme that I have selected. And that theme is Zephyr. And I can see here that it has a fairly muted color palette. So if I want to change the color, I can just select something else. And what you'll notice is that when you make a selection, if I then wanted to apply this color to the next shape, you can see that it kind of stays there in fill. So I can just click on the left hand side of where it says fill to apply exactly the same color. Now line underneath controls the outline around the outside of the shape. So again, if you wanted to change this, you could change it to something like a dark red. And if I wanted to apply the same thing to this one, I could to the left of where it says line. And of course you could select multiple shapes and fill them all with the same color and the same outline at the same time. Now let's just jump back into that fill drop down and explain theme colors a little bit more. Because this first color palette here is entirely controlled by the theme I've selected, it means that if I was to change the theme, select something else, then the palette of colors I see up here is going to be completely different. So let me show you. Let's jump back to design and I'm going to choose a completely different theme. So let's go for Wisp. Now if I jump back to home and back into fill, you can see my theme colors have now switched to whichever theme I have selected. You'll also see underneath that you have some variant colors as well. Now the third group here is standard colors and these are essentially colors which never change. So they're not dependent on the theme that you have selected. So if I was to assign a yellow fill color to this particular shape, if I then go in and change the theme to something else, whilst the rest of the shapes are going to change, that fill color is going to stay as yellow. Let's jump back into fill. We have a no fill option. So if you don't want any type of fill in there, you can choose that. You then have a more colors option, which is going to allow you to get a bit more granular about the colors that you're using. Now the standard color palette contains colors that are suitable for all PCs. It used to be the case that with older PCs, certain color combinations or color gradients weren't available. So you would have to choose colors from the standard color palette to make sure that those colors would show. Now I would say that's not as prevalent these days. Most PCs can handle all different types of colors. We also have a custom tab just here, which allows you to drag around and choose exactly the color that you want. And you can see a little preview in the bottom right hand corner as I drag over. I can use this slider to make the color darker or lighter. And if I want to get super granular and I know the RGB code for a specific color, then I can type the code into here. You also have the hexadecimal value, which is quite a popular way of selecting color. So what you might find is that if you work for a company that has branded colors, the graphic designer in your team will probably have the hexadecimal code for the exact color that they want you to use. So you can enter that into there. Now I'm going to change this fill back to one of the theme colors and I don't really like this theme. Let's change it back to Zephyr. Now, if you want to see even more options when it comes to shape fill, if you right click and click on format shape, it's going to open up the format shape pane on the right hand side. I can expand fill and then I have different ways that I can fill my shape. So I could say no fill. I can have a solid fill. I can also choose a gradient fill. And there are a few different presets for gradients in here, which you can use. And I would say that some are generally better than others. You can choose the type of gradient fill. So linear, radial, so on and so forth, which just defines the pattern or the variant of that fill, you can choose the direction and you can also adjust the gradient stops. And you'll see as I drag these around, the way that that gradient is inside the shape changes. If you want to choose a completely different color, you have your color palette available down here. 
And then you have some options for transparency. So if I move this transparency slider, you can see that the shape film starts to get more and more transparent. So this will allow anything that you've got behind your shape fill to be seen through the color. And you also have a brightness option just here. Now I'm going to change mine back to solid fill. And the last option you have is pattern fill. And again, you have a little gallery of different patterns that you can apply to your shape. Now, I very rarely use these because I find a lot of the time the pattern really distracts from any text that I have inside the shape. But just know if you want to use them, you have access to them from this format shape menu. So the final thing for me to do here is save my flowchart. And now we're pretty much ready to move on to the next lesson where we're going to take a look at themes in a lot more detail. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.